So, I'm the Badger Wrangler, and this is my first blog post for Badger Treats and Other Considerations. I've been putting off doing something like this because it's kind of scary to get this up close and personal with people that I don't know, that will judge me based on my appearance or how messy my kitchen is, but I... I was watching a YouTube video about this guy, let's see, he did this inspirational video about starting your own business and start branding yourself, personal branding, and his name is Gary Vanner, Vannerchuk from the Wine Library, and I was sitting there listening to what he had to say, and I figured, you know, if a guy from Jersey with an almost unpronounceable last name can make a go at something he loves, then so can I. And I really need to stop procrastinating and assuming that what I have to say is not of value to anybody. Because what I have to say is of value, if nothing else, just to myself. Food is important to me, and I think it's important for people to see food in a real life situation. I got myself a video cam partially to record videos of cooking so you could get a better idea of what was actually going on and to Skype with my mom. But I kept putting off making a vlog because I thought, well, I'm gonna have to do my hair and I'm gonna have to put on makeup and there's all this effort and I'm gonna have to deep clean the kitchen and then I was like wait no after listening to uh, what Gary had to say about starting your own business and branding yourself if I don't just do it I will never do it if I'm if what I have to say is that important to someone else they won't care if I am not wearing makeup they won't care if my hair looks like I need to go to the beauty parlor. They won't care if I'm wearing normal people clothes because this is for normal people wearing normal people clothes who need to go get their hair colored or cut, who, who decided not to wear makeup today because, you know, either you're a guy or you're just a woman who is really tired of wearing makeup. Although some guys do wear makeup and that's okay. But even guys who wear makeup get tired of it. So I decided to say, you know, screw it. I just need to do it. There's been a lot that's been popping up in my life about if you want to be happy, if you want to do what it is you love, you can't wait for it. You have to just do it. You can't wait for the ideal moment, the ideal time. You have to make that time. And I have decided that this is my time. I've not posted anything to the Badger Treats and Other Considerations blog in a few weeks now, and it's been because I am nervous. I, I, I am embarrassed. I don't think that what I have to say is important but what I have to say is important and it is valuable and I don't need to sit around and wait until I feel as though I have something truly mind-blowing it doesn't have to be mind-blowing it just has to be about what I care about and what I care about is food so today I am in the process of making food for the badger to put in the freezer for him to eat when I'm not here or for me to use when I've been at work all day and I really don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of cooking. I'd like to be able to pull something out of the freezer when I get up in the morning and come home and it's thawed and I can just throw it in the oven or I can heat it up however it needs to be done and it's done. I don't have to worry about it. I already made black bean chili earlier today. Um, at some point in time you will get the whole vlog and recipe for that because it's a very popular dish at the Badger House. 
It's very good for you. Uh, black beans are a wonderful source of protein and vitamins and other nice things that are necessary for making healthy badgers and healthy badger wranglers. Enough of that, but what I'm making right now is twice baked potatoes. I have, yesterday I had the oven on despite the fact that it was unbelievably warm, unseasonably warm. Um, I was roasting some cherry tomatoes and I decided to throw in potatoes because I needed them to get used up and I figured I had the uh, oven on anyway. If you look at my potatoes, I kind of overcooked them a little bit. This is the other reason I wanted to do a vlog because shit happens. When you cook, shit happens. Sometimes you have a perfect baked potato, sometimes they're dried out. And I know it looks like it's kind of black right there. It's not. It's just it's shadowing from the camera because I'm not the greatest camera person. So essentially what I've done so far is I have taken and scooped out my potato guts and essentially all that entails is a spoon and your half a potato. I like to do them when they're cold because it's just a little bit easier to scoop out. The downside of that is I have to then heat up the mixture before I mix everything else into it so it I'll get a, an actual idea of what it tastes like. You can season it and mix things in when it's cold but you won't just how things smell worse when they're hot they taste better when they're hot if it's meant to be a hot food or if you're making a cold food if it's room temperature or a little bit less than chilled from the fridge uh, fridges should run between and there goes one of the cats fridges should run between 37 degrees and 40 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to keep food optimi optimally fresh that's the other reason not to blog because I can't spell very well and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have been able to spell that word. But if it's 37 to 40 degrees cold, Fahrenheit cold, you're not going to get a good taste of it. You're, it it's going to numb your mouth. So I've got a good collection. I'll do a couple more just for funsies. So yeah, sometimes your potatoes will break. That's okay. When I bake my potatoes, part of the reason these overcooked a bit was I started my oven out at 250, which really is great for roasting tomatoes and garlic, but not so great for cooking potatoes. So I just threw them in the oven. I poked them a few times with, uh, a fork. You can also use a paring knife. Uh, the point of poking them is to keep them from exploding as the pressure builds up inside the skin. You can see some of my knife pokes there. Very lovely. As the potato cooks, the uh, insides are pretty pretty liquidy. So as it cooks, the, the pressure builds up as that liquid turns into steam. And if you don't poke the outside, in order to give the steam vents, it's going to explode all over your microwave or your oven and it's going to be sad. No one wants that. Um, so yeah, I started out at 250 and I, after I, my tomatoes were done, after about an hour and a half, because you like to, if you're, if you're oven roasting tomatoes or garlic, you do it low and slow because it gives a better flavor. It allows the sugar to actually come out and start to caramelize. After the tomatoes were done, I turned my oven up to 350, which means that my potatoes got a little bit drier than they actually should have been because I needed to cook them longer in order for the actual middle to be done. And because it had been low and slow, the outside was a little bit overdone. So I'm gonna pop these and technically, if you start out at 350, you put your, your, your pierced potatoes in the oven at 350, it, it'll take about 40, 50 minutes 
depending on the size of your potatoes and the airflow inside your oven, which believe it or not, does change a lot of things. Um, it takes about, like I said, 40 to 50 minutes. If they're really big, closer to an hour. But as you can see, these were not ginormous potatoes. That's, that's about a medium potato and it's about five, six inches long. No, it's about five inches long, four or five inches long. So I'm gonna pop my potato insides in the microwave for about 40 seconds to take the chill off and to get them a little bit closer to warm rather than room temperature or cold. So like I said, when I start to mix in my ingredients, I'll actually be able to taste them better. So my potatoes came out of the microwave uh, while I was waiting for them to heat up. Um, I washed up the pan that I was going to use because I'm a slacker sometimes and don't always do my dishes at the time of their dirt, 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 ah. at the time that they get dirty. Because I'm very suave and I can always speak properly. So I have used one, two, three, four, five, six potatoes, right? It's given me uh, about, well, that's very convenient. Measuring cup to the rescue. There's one cup. There's two cups. Just over two cups loose packed. So if uh, you packed it down tight, if they weren't, if I didn't have big chunks like this, it would come out to about two cups even of potato innards. Um, now these are going to be twice baked potatoes, which are kind of like making regular old potatoes mashed, but you put them back in their potato suits and put them in the oven and let them brown up and get all cheesy tasty. So one of the things I'm going to be adding to this because it, in all honesty, it's like a cross between a uh, baked potato with toppings and mashed potato, if I want to get real technical which I'm always real technical as you can all tell. One of the things I'm going to be adding to this is bacon. I also cooked up bacon yesterday while my oven was on because I knew I was going to want it for my baked potatoes. I've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. I've got about six. It's actually five and a half because I ate one piece mostly yesterday. Because I mean, I made bacon. Who's not going to eat a slice of bacon? That's why every time you make bacon that's going to go in something else, you always, always make an extra slice of bacon. This is my knife. It's an eight inch chef's knife. Uh, it's a shun. I got it because it's carbon and stainless steel. I feel that they hold the best edge and are ideally suited for my needs. The proper way to hold a knife, for those who don't know, these fingers here go around the collar, right? You wrap your thumb around, keep your index finger pointy for the moment, and then your index finger, your thumb slides up onto the blade to allow for your index finger to go around. That part of your finger right there should be resting on the spine of the knife, right there. Now, your index finger is kind of what controls your knife movements. It's going to move around. It can be like this, it can be like this, but your index finger and your thumb are controlling what your knife does, for those who don't know. So what I'm going to do with this bacon, 
I'm just chopping it up into pieces. Just putting it in a pile, chopping it up. You could, before you cook your bacon, and it takes, in a 350 oven, it takes approximately eight minutes to cook bacon. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little longer, but eight minutes is a good spot to start. And you wanna remember there's gonna be a lot of oil and grease from the bacon as it cooks, as it renders out of the bacon itself. So you gotta keep that in mind. You still have to, if you just lay it on a sheet pan and bake it at 350 Fahrenheit for eight minutes, you're still gonna to have to put it on some paper towels or drain it in some way, or it's just gonna be bacon in bacon grease, which actually doesn't sound that bad, but will kill you very quickly if that's all you eat. So I'm doing the bacon up into chopped bits, and like I was saying before I got distracted by bacon in bacon grease was you could always take a pair of scissors or a knife and cut your bacon up into the size that you want before you cook it. And that saves a little bit of time on one side, but you still have that prep time. So you're not really saving time unless you know that when you go to put the item together, it's gonna t actually, you're not gonna have that much time, so you want to save that time. Um, so what I did is I chopped it all up and I tried to keep it all in one concise size, and then I put my hand over the whole thing and spun it around, and I'm just gonna make a couple passes. And what that does is it breaks it up into slightly smaller pieces. If you want it even smaller, you can go back over it, being careful with your fingers, not like I'm doing. Then you take your bacon and you put it in there. Now you could use a potato masher, which for those who don't know, is generally some variation of this. And essentially what you do is you go with your potatoes and whatever else, but I don't want to wash it and I'm a big hands-on cook. So what I'm gonna do is mix in my bacon while at the same time breaking up my large chunks of potato. Now, so far, there's been no salt, no seasoning of any kind added into this. The bacon has salt. The cheese that I'm gonna be adding later has salt. These are things you have to keep in mind when you're cooking. You want to season in layers, as in, if you're making ground beef to put in something, you season the ground beef with salt and whatever seasonings you want in the beef, and then you also season what you're mixing it with, and then you also season the final product if it's needed. Because if you don't season in layers, it, you're going to taste it. It's going to be missing something. So breaking it up, breaking it up, breaking it up, breaking it up. So there is our lovely bacon and potato. Light always helps. Wash my hands. Now, I barely wash my hands in cook terms. Technically, you're supposed to wash your hands for 30 seconds. In other words, sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or Happy Birthday to yourself like two or three times. When you see cooks on the TV that are all like, don't forget to wash your hands after handling raw blah blah blah. And they go over and they're all like, bloop, and they're done. Yeah, you're gonna kill someone like that or make them sick to be less melodramatic about it you got to wash your hands a lot when you're cooking. It's just how it is. Get used to it. And buy some nice, you know, hand cream. So I've got some shredded, finely shredded Monterey Jack cheddar, uh, queso, quesadilla, and acero. It's a finely shredded Mexican blend, essentially. Um, I buy shredded cheese because it's easier for me and the Badger to have shredded cheese on hand. It's a little bit cheaper to buy bricks and shred your own if you have children who can actually use a cheese grater or you have a food processor. You don't want to be sitting there with a cheese grater by yourself going, uh, I, my life sucks. But uh, yeah, it's easier for us to do it this way. 
I'm going to be very loose in my measurements. That is about a third of a cup of the sh finely shredded Fiesta Blend Cheese. And a little pinch for luck. And this is a Parmesan blend. Uh, Parmesan, Fontiana, Asiago, and Romiana cheese. And there was probably <laughs> probably a scant teaspoon in there. So I'm going to break out another bay. Or not. I could have sworn I had some in there. Actually, do I have any... Well, it's not a bag, but it is shredded Parmesan, which is what I'm looking for. I want that. The, the Parmesan's going to give it a little bit more of a savory bite, uh, a little bit more complete flavor. I like doing cheese blends rather than one specific type of cheese because it gives it a good layer to the taste. So we're not going to count the bit from the bag, but we're going to add that's probably about a quarter cup. Now with cooking you don't have to be precise in things like this. I mean you do to an extent but not excessively precise. And I'm going to blend this together and it's all personal taste for something like this. And there go the cats. I swear to God, they always put on their crazy pants and go running through the house when I have company or are doing something online that other people will see. Are doing. God. I sound so well educated. Hi, Mom. So, uh, yeah, at this point, I'm going to taste it. Please keep in mind, I have not added salt at this point. With the cheese and the bacon added in, I do not need salt. You can add a little bit, but I'm not going to. No, I tell a lie. I'm going to add this much. That's a very tiny amount. That's probably quarter of a teaspoon. <sighs> what I am going to add though, a good amount of, is garlic powder. Not garlic salt, garlic powder. Now please note, I did not wash my hands after tasting. Now, there's two reasons. One, only the badger and I are eating this, so it wouldn't matter if I was going to wash not wash my hands after putting them in my mouth but this is actually what I did so I picked up a little bit and I went so in fact nothing actually touched my mouth so my hands are clean but if you were making food for other people and you put your hands in your mouth to lick off your fingers or whatnot wash them also if you take a spoon and you're all like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Don't put it back in. That's kind of nasty. Do what I do and keep a collection of teaspoons by the stove and switch them out every time you use them. That is a lot of garlic powder. Do not use garlic salt unless the recipe calls for garlic salt specifically because you will end up over salting your product. And really, we use way too much salt in our diet to start with. Garlic powder is just dried granulated garlic. That's all it is. This is probably a tablespoon, a generous tablespoon. So add that in, squish it around. Give it another avoid the mouth taste. Pretty tasty. I always keep 
towels in the kitchen and I try to switch them out every day. I don't always remember to, but towels are very important in a kitchen for impromptu pot holders or cleaning up spills or anything like that. It's very important. So I've got some sour cream here. This is a regular tablespoon for using at the table. And I'm doing one. That's probably a quarter of a cup of sour cream. Now I'm going to mix this up with my spoon um, because it's going to get goopy now. And I really don't want to have my hands in that. Another little taste tells me it tastes pretty good. So what I'm going to do is take my lovely baking sheet, take one of my, that's what it looks like right now by the way, take one of my potato skins and I'm going to put the mixture in. Now, here's the thing. You added stuff. You're probably going to have a little bit left over. Um, that's okay. You can either eat it straight right now or save it for something else. You want to kind of pack it in. And the reason you're going to have... Well, you're packing it in so there's no holes. Um, the reason you're going to have some extra is because you added to what you took out. So while it may have fit before, it's not going to fit now. And I apologize if I sound like I'm telling you something that you already know, but not everybody knows this, and I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So it's packed in there. There's a little bit extra on top. See that? All right. Put it on my baking sheet and do it for my other potatoes. And eventually this part will be edited out, <laughs> probably while I'm waiting for the potatoes to bake before I show them to you, so you don't have to watch me filling 12 potato skins. As fascinating as that is. And we're back. Um, it's been 30 minutes, during which time I got no edi editing done because my computer is slow and being a total ass right now. Here are our twice baked potatoes. They've got a bit of goldenness to them. Um, and like I said, it's been 30 minutes. Now I'm putting this down on my countertop. It's wood, so it's semi heat resistant, but not totally. So as I'm putting it down, I'm putting a pot holder under it to keep from, you know, setting my kitchen on fire. What we're gonna do now is put some cheese on top. More Fiesta Blend. Because, I mean, honestly, who can't get excited about cheese called Fiesta Blend? Now, we're just gonna put a little bit of cheese. And you're gonna make a mess. There's gonna get you're gonna get cheese over everything, and you're gonna be all like, no. One way to get around this is before you put your potatoes in the oven for the first time, put foil over your pan. Um, yeah, it's a waste of foil. Some would say you could use parchment paper, which you could compost if you had a compost or a garden to put compost in. Um, I don't at the moment, even though I really should, because I've got the space for it. I just haven't gotten around to it because I'm a horrible human being. But, yeah. Otherwise, just as soon as you take them out of the oven after the cheese is melted, you want to, you know, 
clean your pan, or you could do what I'm going to do and wait till tomorrow morning to wash it, at which point the cheese is going to be hard and will just pop off when I rub it off a little bit. So we're pu probably putting about, oh god, I don't even know, uh, a tablespoon, a scant tablespoon. Uh, a scant tablespoon means that it's most, if you were to take a tablespoon measure and put cheese in it, it wouldn't quite fill it up, but it would be mostly filled up. Now, pot holder, because this pan is still 350 degrees or thereabout, and we'll pop it in the oven until the cheese melts, which in all honesty, you could probably turn the oven off at this point and just let it finish cooking on the radiant heat that's already there. Um, it'll take about four to seven minutes to completely melt. Um, and then what I'm going to do in order to make these for the freezer is I'm going to, once they come out of the oven, let them cool off a little bit, cover them, and put them in my fridge until they're completely cool and then I'm going while leaving them on the cooking pan that they're on then I'm going to take the whole thing and put it in the freezer keeping them on the cooking pan and separate and I'm going to let it freeze for at least overnight well it'll be all day tomorrow until I get home from work is because I'm going to be putting them in the freezer tomorrow morning uh, because it's really late right now and so I'll put them in the fridge tonight before I leave for work in the morning I will put them I guess it would be less confusing if you actually saw my face and not my stomach but uh, I'll put them in the freezer tomorrow morning before I leave for work when I get home from work I will take them out if they're completely frozen I will then put them in either a Ziploc bag or if I have space I'll put them in one of my handy dandy cleaned containers like this with a lid and just now that they're completely frozen I can put them together in either the Ziploc bag or the container like so and they won't stick together you can just open it up and pull out however many you want and then let them thaw once they're thawed put them in the oven until they're heated um, and the cheese has started getting bubbly on top. Now, one thing about doing twice baked potatoes or anything, if you don't have a thermometer, because you want them to get hot on the inside, you want them to be, you know, you're not gonna make someone sick, they're completely warm, they're gonna stay warm for a while. If you don't have a thermometer, like I don't, because I left it at a crappy job, <sighs> take a spoon or a knife, Poke it down in there, pull it out, give it a second, very carefully, because you could burn yourself, feel the end. If it feels really freaking hot, you're probably good. Again, don't quote me on this, don't use it for pork or chicken or fish or anything that could make you sick if you don't completely cook it all the way through, but if you're doing something like potatoes that don't have anything raw in them, then don't even worry about it. Speaking of which... So this is the potatoes at the four minute mark. They could probably go a little bit longer if I was gonna serve them right away. I'm gonna go ahead and pull them now because like I said, they're gonna be frozen and then recooked later. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it for twice baked potatoes. Uh, if you want to see the video that actually got me off my butt to actually do this vlog about cooking for badger treats and other considerations, I am going to include a link to that video in the doobly-doo in my pants. Um, and there will also be a link in the doobly-doo in my pants to badger treats and other considerations. And I will have the recipe for twice baked potatoes actually typed out like a grown-up so you can be all 
I actually need these things instead of having to pause and go back and figure out what in God's name I was talking about. So yeah, um, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and if you're a hater, I'm gonna ban you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys, don't forget to eat healthy, and make tasty, tasty treats for your badgers.